Our next guest will be releasing his comedy album from Get Her Done Records and making his television debut. Please welcome the very funny Derek Stroop. If you know him, you love him. He was the center of attention and everybody loved him. So everybody wanted to be friends with him. Derek and I met sixth grade in Monrovia Middle School playing basketball in PE. It was Derek, David Sambleton, and myself. We, we came together and made 3D. Uh, we, we used to tear it up, hoop it up. Look, they see all this comedy you doing. They see the, the big redneck white boy from Alabama. <laughs> they don't know that you really kick it with the black folks for real, for real. <laughs> there she is, a uh, original double steak burger with cheese, just the, just the burger. And then I'm also going to do a... Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's not. I wasn't even worried about that. I just wanted a larger, a larger sprite. I wasn't even. He, he, he's more upset about it than I am. Do you, do you want a larger sprite? That's all. That's all I wanted. Yeah, yeah. Just knowing myself and that guy's energy in there. Yeah. That went exactly how it should have gone. Yeah. But he knew. He, he's a good employee. He's like what I used to do. He's like I can't talk to these customers. Rick, somebody help. You don't just get breaks. But everybody gets a cigarette break. You almost joined, I mean, for me, I joined like reluctantly. I mean, I remember Cantrell being like, you don't even look right. You don't even look normal smoking cigarettes. Oh, yeah. I think that's for a lot of people. If you saw me smoking a cigarette and singing karaoke, <laughs> I needed, if I was singing The Devil Went to, Down to Georgia, I needed help. We didn't have Ubers back then, but you uh, we I needed one. That Uber sketch you got? Yeah, man. Hit home with me the other day when I was out like, yeah. No, that's the truth. I've slept on, I've, I've slept on Uber before. Yeah, that's based on a true story. Everybody that had different parts of my life, different impacts, different friends, and, and you know, a lot of them don't live around here anymore. Just the ones I could get to. Where were you guys meeting? Uh, Mildred's. Oh, shit. <laughs> what a great reaction. Yeah. What a great re I mean that place is incredible. It's a country buffet. It's awesome. And, yeah, it's just evolved. Everybody's reaction has been that way. I think Brandon Gibbs when he said, My God, is it open still? Uh, I think Alabama's one of two states that does not have a lottery. You can't play Powerball, you can't do anything. Oh wow. So that's when my husband and I go play the lottery. This is so redneck. When we drive to Tennessee, because Mildred's is right on the border of Tennessee. Okay. So they can go do a couple <laughs> scratch offs. And <laughs> go to yeah. Mildred's. Mildred's is the excuse. Well, night, buddy. Hell, we're this close to the state line. We might as well cross it. Third grade. He was a new kid from West Virginia. I was basically the, the little runt of the class. And uh, it's like a movie. I was on the playground one day, and I was getting bullied by a couple, like two or three of our classmates. And they were giving it to me. I was on the ground, getting, I had dirt all over me, whatever. I looked up, and the first time I ever seen there was like a stealthy army ranger came out of nowhere. What? Snatches you boys up by the collars, starts working them. Dispatches of the last one on the ground, and then picked me up, dusted me off. That's all she wrote. We were basically peas and carrots ever since then. This principal is still paddling. We'll ask. <laughs> I'm going to tell a story about it. About one time getting paddled on stage. Yeah. I'm, I'm like on one stage. time. <laughs> one time getting paddled. I'm going to tell it like. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> you said on stage. So Mr. Brown looked up my mother's number on his Rolodex, like you did in 1998. <laughs> and he called Stacy at work. And he said, hey, Stacy, Derek doesn't have his report here at school. And he sold me on the fact that it is for sure at home. So I was wondering if I could give him a ride to the house so we could grab it. <laughs> no, no, can y'all imagine the panic? Can y'all imagine? Because in my head, I'm like, well, thank goodness it's against the law for the principal to drive me home. You know, but it's not, and it wasn't. And we got in Mr. Brown's truck, and we drove down the Nick Davis Road. 
and we pulled up to my house, and I'll never forget the panic. I mean, pulling into the driveway of my home, I ran inside. I, didn't, I, I sat down. I'll never forget I had an art table. I sat down, and I started to write. <laughs> and, I, and I thought, he's going to have to hold on just a minute because I'm going to have to knock out a 1,000 words. And then I got smart. I knew I had to think on my feet. I went over to my underwear drawer, and I put on every pair of underwear that I had. I promise you, I, I, I started with the tightest ones and worked my way up. And then I put on, I put on my biggest pair of pants I have. And I, and I walked out to that truck. I'm not kidding, y'all. I'm not, I walked out to that truck, and I got in that truck, and I was like, hey, I can't find it. And we went back to this office, and we walked into that back room, and he was like, you know, I'm going to have to give you three licks. And, you know, I, I was leaning into it. I go, oh, well, you know, that's, that's, tough, that's tough, man. I, you know, I hate to hear that. I wish I was prepared, you know. And I'll never forget, I bent over on his desk, and he hit me with that first lick. And there was no sound almost. I mean, it was like hitting a, hit, hitting a comforter pad. With, with, and then he hit me again, and he hit me a third time. And I walked out, and I'll never forget, Rita was working at the front desk. I'm pretty sure that was her name. She was the secretary. And um, she didn't love me. But uh, I, I walked out, and she goes, that didn't sound like any paddling I've heard before. And those are just, those are some of the stories from my childhood that I, I mean, I still keep with me. You know, I tell people, I, I've got a camera guy with me that's, we're, we're, going, we're, we're touring around Harvest. I'm showing him some of the places. I'm really proud of where I'm from. This is, this is such a unique area. I tell people, growing up in the lunch line in school, half the kids' parents were farmers. The other half were rocket scientists. You don't find that demographic anywhere. <laughs> I mean, you know, it was, it, it's such an interesting place. Some of the smartest people you've ever met trying to kill a deer so bad. Is he a better comedian or better athlete? It depends on which, uh, which athlete you're talking about. Apparently, he's a comedian. But seventh, eighth grade, um, he's Christian Leitner, so I don't know if he told a better joke than he could uh, do an up and under. Uh, he was a great basketball player, um, so I don't know. That's a pretty tough question. His peak basketball skills versus peak comedy, I'm going to have to go comedy because we still haven't seen his best yet. I'm trying to be gluten-free the last month. I think my streak is messed up for a little Yeah, yeah, you don't stand a chance. You might as well just dive in head first, I'm though. To prevent brain fog. Yeah. Yeah. Ain't nothing wrong. Here's one of the best parts about coming to Mildred's is the soft serve. Okay. Look at your options over here. We got some broke up M and M's, some sprinkles. We're gonna go after. This guy's a pro. He's getting a little bit of cake with the ice cream. That's a pro move, right there. All you can on a little bowl. <laughs> <laughs> Getting all you can in a little bowl. Yeah. Here we go. Drop it on down. You can't, you know. I mean, it's been this, it's probably been the same machine the whole 30 years I've been coming here. And then you come right over here. You see this right here? I'm a sprinkles guy from way back. You see that? And that's all you need right there. Maybe a little bit of this. We, you know, maybe a little bit of this. There we go. Doesn't have to be your birthday to have a good time, Jeff. <laughs> I'm excited. Oh, excuse me. Come on, dog. Come on. <laughs> this is a great thing about, thank you so much. That you don't, it, they don't tell you as an, okay, Cantrell. Look how your hands are laying on. You're over here telling, you're over here, he's over here telling me, I mean, to, no, you're jealous. You're jealous. Boy, that, that, this guy's jealous. You see this. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's crazy. You know somebody forever. It is. I love it. All right, homie. Well, I'll holler at you here soon, buddy. Love you, buddy. All you can eat buffet is seven days a week. You gonna snap that oh, pizza? Oh, he already got that. He don't need it. Look at this right here next to him. Weight loss. <laughs> what a diabolical sign. Right out, yeah, on your way. Oh.
Oh, this is my song. Bentley rose on these toes, stuff the months of nigga be flippin'. Then things you always see me glistening. Then those down bumpin' sisters. Some of these cowards out here hatin'. Keep on hatin' cause I ain't listening. To the end of the song get the best part. <laughs> We, did, we couldn't put that on there. <laughs> Here I know I sound like a bowl of gravy to y'all. Um, originally from Harvard.